everybody, back here, Pauline here. Welcome one and all to my humble silver pouring bench this fine, sunny, hot weekend that we're having here in the UK. Having a bit of a heat wave at the moment in the UK, certainly have been for the last couple of months now it seems, so make sure you are staying nice and cool and hydrated wherever you may be. Now today we are going to be pouring some 100 gram silver foreign bars. I gave a first look at these on my channel last weekend uh, and this is the completed prototype with the hallmark underneath the 2018. Today we are going to be pouring some of these live, hopefully anyway, we're going to get them all nice and uh, close to 100 grams. Uh, it's not as easy as you might think, throwing 100 grams of silver into this graphite mould is not as easy as you think. Uh, I like to do things slightly differently to be able to create this kind of finish on the bars and to have these lovely ripples which is at the end of the day what it's all about here in the backyard bullion household it is about creating nice pieces and nice ripples uh, and uh, yeah I wanted to share with you all on the silver forum and beyond uh, what I kind of go through making these because uh, it seems like I've been doing nothing but making these bars for the last kind of six weeks two months or so uh, and you'll notice how nice and tidy my bench is looking by the way compared with the last time that you guys were here uh, it was an absolute pigsty there was silver shot everywhere like this just lying around uh, I'm not a very tidy person and I don't tidy as I go uh, and when you've got this board out for like six weeks or so uh, just doing nothing but pouring 100 gram bars and Tetris pieces, it seems. Uh, it um, just got really, really messy. Uh, so eventually I just decided that's enough. I'm going to tidy it all up. I took the board down, got all of the silver shot off uh, and uh, cleaned up all the graphite dust. So here we have a nice clean blank canvas to start to use again. Now, the 100 gram bars, uh, for those of you who don't know, there's a link down in, uh, in the description below to a uh, thread on the Silver Forum where you can look about all of these bars and find out what they're about. But basically, they are Silver Forum merchandise, a way for uh, members of the Silver Forum to support the Silver Forum. It's not a free place to run, so proceeds from the sales of these bars go very much towards helping keeping the Silver Forum running and also keeping it as cheap a place as possible for paid members, but also generally a free place for members generally. It's a fantastic forum, it's got a very very welcoming and uh, nice community. Uh, it's also got a thriving trade section which is of course invaluable. So make sure you head on over to the Silver Forum if you'd like to support the Silver Forum, uh, check out these bars. The link is down in the description below to that thread. Now as I said, it's not just as easy as pouring 100 grams of silver into this mould. This is the mould I'm using by the way, it's a um, just a standard mould which I bought off uh, of eBay of all places and I've had this mould for over two years now, it's one of the very first moulds I bought and in fact this is a little top tip for any of you out there who are looking to get into silver pouring. Uh, this is the first mistake I made uh, in the whole world of silver pouring because when I was looking to buy moulds I was looking at um, what kind of size pieces that I wanted to make and this came up as um, you know sort of like a, a it was like a five ounce mold I think it was it said it was a five ounce mold and I was like yeah that's that's the kind of size bar I want to pour uh, but of course it was five ounces measured in gold rather than silver so of course when I got it it only takes two and a half ounce or three ounces ish of silver in fact when when you pour this you'll see and, and this one won't fit right back in because I've squashed it down a bit with this big old stamp but when we pour into here You'll see that I'm going to be aiming just for the very kind of top of the lip of this mould and I've uh, worked out that that should yield about 100 grams in here. Now I'm using Silver Shot to do my pouring today. Here is my uh, very sophisticated silver delivery system into the graphite crucibles. It's just a metal wine top with some masking tape at the bottom to stop all the silver shot falling out. But it seems to work very effectively for delivering silver into one of the uh, graphite melting crucibles. This is one of the used ones that I've got here uh, and it really is just as simple as topping it up as you go like this. Now the advantage of using silver shot that I found anyway is that it's, uh, it's a lot quicker to melt than uh, big old lumps of silver because uh, obviously there's more surface area on it and I found as well that it yields a much nicer pour um, than regular kind of lumps of silver you get much more subtle ripple lines within your silver bars which is of course what we're aiming to achieve now I pour these freehand which means I will be uh, guesstimating how much silver goes into this mould. So I said right at the start it's not as easy as just putting 100 grams of silver into this graphite crucible and pouring it out into here. If we do that we end up with all of this kind of graphite schmutz as I call it and graphite pollution on the bars. Um, and if I can find you, so here's an example. 
So this is just a little uh, tiny blob of silver which I had uh, come out of a crucible at the end of a melting cycle and get it to focus. Uh, you can see this kind of grey area here, this is just graphite pollution, graphite schmutz. And it does come off, you can clean it off with a little bit of sandpaper and vinegar, but it will distort the ripples and that's not good. And you can see here, this is kind of the dregs of one of the crucibles. Uh, you can see all the graphite assembled on the bottom of that up there and that's just uh, dirty silver which is it's going to come out, but it's going to affect the way that a pour looks. So I pour by freehand, and I stop short of the graphite, which comes out at the very end of the pour from the crucible. So I stop short to ensure that we get a really high quality look and finish on the bar. But that of course means that sometimes the bars will not be 100 grams, they'll be under or over. So the task and the challenge is to try and get them within a certain degree of accuracy and I want to try and keep that within sort of 5% of uh, 100, so in other words up to 105 grams, otherwise I'm starting to give away a lot more free silver than I would like. So talking of the silver, it is pretty much up to temperature so all I have left to do now is to turn on the blowtorch and get this mould all nice and hot so that when the silver goes in it's all nice and smooth bottomed. So if we turn that on. So we'll give that a few minutes to get all nice and warm and I'll be back and we'll start pouring some hopefully 100 gram bars. Okay guys, we are back, the mould is up to temperature and the silver is at a balmy 1075 degrees, which incidentally is the same temperature as it is here in the UK at the moment. It is absolutely sweltering today, not very pleasant at all. Now we're going to be able to pour two 100 gram bars from this uh, batch of silver, got enough in there for two. You'll notice that the blowtorch is still on, the blowtorch is what creates the ripples on the bar, it's how I am able to create the nice fine ripples when the silver starts to cool. So we're going to pour two, take, well pour the first one, take one out, pour the second one and then we'll check the waste to see if we've hit that magic uh, 100 or at least within that margin of error which I was talking about earlier. So here we go, wish me luck. So I'm just pouring just to the lip. I think that first one, I mean it looks very, very nice, but I have a feeling that will be just slightly over. I like to pour just under the lip so that the kind of, the dome of the silver is just about uh, underneath the top of the bar mold. I didn't explain that very well, but I know what I meant. Here we go, here's the second one. Right, that one is going to probably be slightly under. It might actually be very close to 100. It's very hard to tell exactly what the weights will be. Put your guesses down in the comment section though. Bar 1, what do you think the weight was? Bar 2, what do you think the weight was? Going to quench them now. A lot of people ask me, why do you quench silver? Well, I quench silver simply for the fun of it, it's a great noise, but also uh, because it's just a lot quicker. It's not like steel or anything like that, it doesn't um, change its hardness or its durability. Uh, silver's a very versatile metal in that respect. It simply makes things a lot easier because I don't have to sit there and wait for uh, you know half an hour for it to cool down. So here are my scales. Now for those of you who have been following my channel, you'll know that I've got some very, very accurate scales. These are very closely calibrated to those, but of course those uh, scales that I use will be a sort of final double check to make sure that any bars which are very close to 100 grams are indeed 100 or over. So bar number one, I think it's going to be about 107. Let's see. 109 just with a little bit of change, so that one's a little bit too heavy for me. Now bar number two I think is going to be just under, I think it's going to be 99 point something. No, I'm wrong, that's perfect, that's almost bam smack in the middle of my uh, uh, sort of weight allowance so to speak, and you can see the scales here just fluttering a little bit, uh, it's probably to do with the heat of the uh, granite block underneath them. So Sorry about that guys, my uh, camera's battery died. Uh, fortunately it was at a perfect point in the cut so that we didn't really lose any of the footage. Uh, so we have one bar done. This is uh, the one that we got out of those two. That seems to be roughly the kind of hit rate which I'm getting at the moment. Some days I get much better than that and I'll pour uh, you know, seven or eight 
uh, bars in a, in a cycle and I'll get six or seven of them that are within that weight range. Uh, other days it will be a lot less and uh, sometimes not at all. I've had a couple of pouring cycles where I've been uh, over and under so much uh, and it gets very frustrating. So there we go, that is the uh, the 100, and well 102 gram bar, but 100 gram bar that will be shortly made into a uh, full-on fledged 100 gram silver forum bar. Now, next weekend I will be sharing a video of the whole after pouring process. So the stamping uh, of this bar in particular, this one will be uh, stamped on camera. I think I'm going to make this one the very last bar in the mintage, number 150, which will be raffled off for charity later in the year to make it a nice and special one. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're going to do next Sunday. If you liked this video, please put a thumbs up on it and share it around on your social media. That would be very helpful for everything I do here on my YouTube channel. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel and you want to see me stamp this on my anvil, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the little alarm bell if you want to get a notification when that video goes live. Otherwise, head on over to the Silver Forum, check out what these bars are all about and go and support the Silver Forum. Share some love over there. It's a fantastic place to be. Otherwise, I hope you all have a fantastic week ahead. Thank you so much for watching and please make sure that you like, share, comment and subscribe for more. 